Welcome to High Road U. At the U, High Road Solution believes that modern learning is all about being multi-channel, multi-format, and user-centric. We are creating educational content based on the content you want. Be sure to check out our future program schedule by clicking the High Road U resources link in the important information box in the top right-hand side of your screen. We are pleased to present today's Blue and R entitled Overheard, Top Trends and Highlights of the Litmus Email Design Conference with Suzanne Carawan, Chief Marketing Officer at High Road Solution. My name is Jeff Baker, and I will be your moderator today. Today's presentation will last approximately 60 minutes and include a specific question and answer period at the end of the session. You may ask a question anytime via the web conference system by simply typing it into the Q&A box on the lower right-hand side of your screen and then clicking the call out button or hitting enter on your keypad. These instructions will be repeated later in the program. If you have any technical questions during the event, please email support at highroadsolution.com. Today's webinar is being recorded and all participant lines will be muted during the live program. Attendees of this live webinar presentation have also earned an ASAE CAE credit. And now I'm pleased to introduce today's content leader, Suzanne Carwin. Having held global positions in the association, nonprofit, and telecom event industries, Suzanne has the joy of crafting the brand story for many companies and C-suite executives, providing the strategic marketing plan and overseeing the execution of digital, event, content, and channel marketing programs. An expert in branding and go-to-market strategies, Suzanne has launched dozens of products and programs and brought several companies to market. As an active participant, member, and volunteer, Suzanne is a member of the American Society of Association Executives and serves on their meetings and exposition council. And with that, Suzanne, I'd like to turn the floor over to you. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, this is an exciting topic, I think. We're taking a little bit of a different turn today of a, of a webinar and kind of doing a synopsis of an event that we went to that we were um, really thought was of such value. We wanted to make sure that all of our not-for-profit clients and uh, anybody else out there in the community knows about it and is um, can take advantage of some of the learning that we certainly took back and also so you understand you know, what the experts out there are doing. So if you're not familiar with Litmus, so this is all about the Litmus Email Design Conference, which was a hashtag uh, TEDC13. I just want to take a couple minutes to just give you a context and make you understand who Litmus is and, and why this is a big deal. So Litmus is a company, it's a software company, that makes basically a testing uh, SaaS-based software so you can take your emails and you can run it through. Here at High Road, we use this actually for uh, our clients, for the ones that we're doing their email for. And we certainly recommend it to uh, any of our clients who want to take this in-house and do it themselves. Because as you'll see as we talk about this, most organizations have uh, very wide, very <laughs> differing levels of expertise and skill sets that exist on their staff. And I think you, what you'll walk away from today is understanding even uh, how many more skills that you now need on staff or that you need to at least account for by outsourcing um, in today's world of um, of email marketing, which uh, is still the number one uh, way that most uh, nonprofits communicate with their constituent base, whether you're an association or a nonprofit or higher ed. Uh, and actually, for that matter, probably I'd throw in um, even from the corporate to B2C type of thing as well, uh, because it's low cost, et cetera. But there is a lot of more things happening. It's actually kind of a... Um, a re-evolution of email, and that's what they try to say it, that, you know, people have been saying email's dead. It's so far from dead now. Uh, and, and over the course of my marketing career, uh, I've always felt email marketing is one of those things that you have to do up there with, like, going to the dentist and uh, getting your vehicle inspected. And I've never been a huge fan of it because I've always understood its complexity. I've never had the right people on staff to really be able to handle it effectively, et cetera. And so when actually I took this position at High Road, I laughed about it because the two things that High Road does incredibly well are the uh, email and integrations and webinars and integrations. And those two have been the bane of my uh, marketing existence. So I thought it was just funny that I should end up with a company where finally we're able to do these things effectively. But where I'm going with that is we want to ta start talking about really how, at the end of the day, how organizations are, need to be morphing their organizational structure and their people on staff to really be able to take advantage of the technologies that are now out there and to be able to tar start doing modern communication really effectively because a lot has changed. So first and foremost, let's back it up and let's talk about Litmus again. So Litmus again is a Boston-based company. 
and they make this software as a service. It is a, I might have put it in here, this, we're looking at their home page. And it's very um, economical, incredibly economical. Uh, and so again, we recommend it. Now there are other email service providers out there that have a built-in uh, tool to it, but the way we see it, this is the best on the market. And High Road, we select the best products on the market, the best brands of software on the market, and deliver it into the not-for-profit community. Uh, and then we basically um, massage it for our particular needs that we have, which are, you know, we're different and we're not corporations. Um, so we are able to do that. And so we use Litmus and we profess Litmus and we tell everybody to use Litmus because it's the best out there for the price and everything else. And why not use that? So just to let you know, uh, we fully support this and and want you to uh, take advantage of this as well. So what I'm showing you here is after I've actually, we have, of course, a subscription. We're looking at the actual Litmus product. And I just want to show you a couple of screenshots just to get you familiar with what the tool does. So basically, here I am. I'm cranking away. I'm cutting and pasting my email. I'm putting my whole you know, email newsletter together, email offer, and you know, come in early word registrations are ending, renew now, whatever the email might be. I take that email, and when I use my usual test send to myself, instead of just sending to my own different inboxes or sending to my uh, Outlook client, my Yahoo client, my Gmail, you know, and trying to look at how this thing is going to render on all these different email clients, which you could do yourself, but Litmus gives you the fast track. I just literally send my test email to Litmus, and it basically runs it through its entire testing schedule and then spits out exactly how this thing is going to render for me based on which client, which email client is actually receiving it. So you can see here at the top, it's breaking out for me by desktop clients, it's breaking out by mobile clients, and it's breaking out by web-based clients. So I'm able to now understand very quickly and then go into detail with it. And then probably, it, this is a much more, again, a better format for, a, a better use of time for sure, for how to effectively test your email, how it's going to render and display on these different email clients. So I'm going to look at all this, and then hopefully I know how to fix it. Okay, So that's one part of the litmus tool. The second part is it will actually do subject line testing, which um, is becoming increasingly important when you start looking at it on subject lines for mobile. As more and more people are using mobile, uh, it's important to see how your, uh, your email subject line is actually going to render and how many characters we'll be able to see. Okay, So here you can see this is looking at it for mobile and what this looks like. This was a pre-event email we did. And then also it will uh, give you the ability to do a link check. So it will actually show you all the links uh, where you are on your, that's represented by the little green dot and the oranges. And it will be able to tell you, if I roll over that, it will actually show um, where that link uh, resolves to and ensure that, number one, visually it's the correct place. You don't have to actually click through, which is a nice time saver as well as it will tell you if there's any sort of problems with that link or you're going to encounter something that's going to be a little bit wonky, right? So it's not going to work so fast. So that's a nice little piece of that as well. And then lastly, there's a piece in here that has a code analysis piece in it, which is phenomenal, phenomenal, because it shows you for every email client. Now, it's only phenomenal if and only if should you, run, you see the issue you understand how to fix it. <laughs> you notice it's very small. It'll show you the little triangle to say the you know, warning sign, like the international sign for warning, saying there's a problem here with some sort of code that you're using. Maybe you're using a deprecated tag. Maybe you're using a, you know, a, a line tag or using some sort of div tag that's not going to work correctly for what you're looking at. And again, that's all great if you have somebody on staff who actually knows how to fix it. And that therein lies one large part of email marketing as a problem for many not-for-profits, uh, is that a lot of times you don't have all the range of skills that you really need to uh, do email marketing effectively. But nonetheless, it is quite nice because all that's built into Litmus. So point being, Litmus now, just looking at the product, therefore draws ac across an entire community of people that are t tend to be called email designers. Okay? And so that was how they came up with this idea of the email design conference. And so what, they, what Litmus did is they put on a three-city tour, San Fran, London, and Boston. We went to the one in Boston. And, uh, and we went, and what's interesting about even the way we approached it, we went with um, our Ron, our chief technology officer, me, uh, representing kind of the marketing branch, and uh, a gal who's an email designer, meaning she does both the graphic design and she does coding. 
and so think about even who attended that. And we saw that kind of same representation for many well-known brands that came, um, a lot of consumer brands, uh, as well as a lot of, um, we saw a lot of universities because we were in Boston, and we saw a bunch of nonprofits there as well. But what we tended to see is that we had a representative from marketing, kind of from the marketing communications, graphic side, the content side, and the coding technical side, that kind of milieu of people are the ones that's gathering. So it's a very large community of people that understand that this email marketing thing is, uh, is, is kind of weird and funky and requires a lot of cross skill sets uh, because the likelihood of finding all that in one person is not real high. So I've given you some of the basics here on the slide. We're going to send you the slide deck, of course, after it. All these are real links because this whole presentation day is just chock full of uh, of links and tips and tricks you can get the resources and pull from you know the fact that we went to the conference and, and are sharing this with you. So I've given you a link to the conference website. You can um, look at the hashtag for this and see all the tweets that happened, which were uh, plenty and very funny. Email design people are very funny. The other thing is uh, just two tools you might not even know about, um, and this is one I didn't know about. There's something called Scene, which is an event overview, and basically it's a, it's a uh, software out of the UK that basically does an event aggregation of the tweets and the pictures and some of the um, um, other photos and whatnot that went on during, during the conference, and you can actually see it all aggregated together in a very pretty style. Might, you might want to look at that uh, at scene.com and think about it for using it for your next event as kind of a post-event follow-up. It's quite nice. Similarly, there's Conferize, which I have seen before, and they also have put um, EDC out on Conferize. So again, it's another quick way of looking at all the things that happen on Twitter with the photos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Additionally, I wrote a summary of the day, and I'm giving you the link to our website where that summary is found. I'm giving you the key takeaway points um, for associations, which is a little bit more than what I'm presenting here. And then lastly, I just want to let you know that Litmus also at this event launched their first community for email designers. Uh, it is for subscribers to the product only, of course, but I just wanted you to know that that is out there. So if you are a subscriber now and you didn't know that you had access to that tool, well, there you go, another new kind of benefit from Litmus. Okay, so let's move on and now start talking about the top themes that we saw in the Email Design Conference 13. And again, top themes, we're going to see it again and again and again and again. And um, I personally uh, in a, if I'm in a nice position where I go to, I don't know, no less than 30 events a year, 30 conferences a year across you know, all sorts of technology and content and marketing and communications and et cetera, you know, user-centric types of behavioral marketing conferences. And so I personally see the same, these same trends I'm about to present to you over and over and over again. And I just came off of going to ASE Technology Conference this week, and many of those, the same trends I also heard at that conference. So if you two attended, these things will definitely resonate. So nothing here should be shattering new. But let's kind of talk about some of the things that we pulled away. So top trends in email design as a whole. And when I say email design, one of the big things, one of the big keynote speakers had a whole session about flying under the radar, about this idea that nobody talks, people say email marketing, but they don't talk about email design, right? <laughs> they talk about sending out emails and measuring open rates. That's really what they mean about email marketing. And no one's talking about the art of email design. That is being able to put together the correct content, the correct message with the correct uh, graphic uh, elements, and being able to put it together in a way that's compelling to the actual person that you're trying to target, and who, by the way, has given you permission to, um, to communicate with them, right? Because everybody's using opt-in, permission-based types of uh, email programs. And that people are really still in the dark ages of not taking the time to put the artistry into the email communications that it really should, um, should receive. So the first keynote speaker was Chris Studebaker of Exact Target, and he was really pushing for this idea that email design as a whole needs to be seen and accepted as its own industry and its own profession. So I pulled that out because I think it's really important because when we look at the association market in particular, and also true for the nonprofit market, 
uh, those are the two ones, not so much for higher ed, but those two in particular, rarely do you find somebody on staff who only does email design. I mean, rare, I mean, that is very, and I'll tell you, because we serve 400 organizations, and it's very rare that we find somebody who actually has somebody on staff that this is what they do all the time, and they're living and breathing it. Instead, what you usually have is a bunch of people who have some pieces of the skills, and the point of um, Chris Studebaker was that there are very few really true email designers because it requires a big mix of skills. You have to be all these things to all these people, so if you have graphic design skills and you're trying to work on email, the next thing you know, somebody's pulling you off to say, hey, can you design the postcard for us? Or hey, can you design the table tent card that we need for the event? And that happens all the time. Or then you get pulled off to say, hey, can you work on the web? And they're like, well, I'm not a website designer. I'm an email designer. And people really don't understand what's involved in email design. That was kind of one of his main points. And therefore, these people are underappreciated and misunderstood, and also that they're usually the only person on staff that does this. They're isolated, right? So th these people, I can't tell you the level of engagement in the room over the two days with having 400 email designers find each other, right? It was like long lost cousins who thought they were all alone, stranded on an island, and they suddenly realized that they have family. And it was like hugs and kisses, and people were laughing and, and wiping their eyes from crying because they were able to finally share, you know, this kind of thing. Now, personally, I thought, hopefully somebody out there is forming an association of this because certainly this group of people needs it. And Litmus has certainly taken the um, first steps in this. Now, there are other email associations for sure. But again, their point was that even those associations, they don't have a niche group that's tight enough to just focus on the email design portion of this. So point being, Something to think about now when you start looking at your own staff, whether that's in the marketing or technology side or the communication side or however you, and the question is, how do you organize that and how do you look for building that capacity either in-house or getting a plan in place for 2014 to go forward for how you're going to outsource that? And I think that's going to be a top question, I think, on the, he on the heads of uh, marketing and IT out there in the association community about how do we do this now effectively, which department does it sit in, and how do we budget for it. Okay, so the point being that, again, not set up for success now because you need to have a, to be an email designer, you need to have this combination of all of these skill sets, or you need a team of people that have these skill sets that can collaborate together. And that also, many times, this email designer is an untapped resource because they're just sitting there and they have all this knowledge that nobody even knows about, like how to use CSS effectively across different email clients. But they're being managed by people who don't even understand what an email client is. They don't understand why it would be different if you have 30% of your um of your members with Yahoo accounts and the other 70% on Gmail. Like they just don't even have the basics understood. Another take home message I think for the not-for-profit market is the upper brackets of the people who are managing, maybe director and VP and C-level, need some education. That, you know, they probably, if the people, meaning the people who are not the practitioner, we need to do a better job of educating them as to what these things are because this is not rocket science anymore and it's not new. I mean, email marketing has been out there a long time. So we need to make sure that we have people that are um, in managerial positions who understand just the basics of the, so they can even understand the complexity as to what goes into email so they can better, they can be better. Uh, so number one, they're not buying just on price and commoditized stuff. They're buying on quality. They're hiring the right people. They're also understanding, is their email program any good? And usually, today's world, most, again, not-for-profits just look at open rate, and maybe they look at click-through, and they don't even do very much segmentation, let alone lifecycle messaging, let alone really being able to target, let alone being doing automation and integration effectively. So we have a long way to go is where I'm going with that. So that what this uh, Chris Studebaker was basically saying to these email designers is, hey, let's have a call to action to raise up because the people that tend to, his point was that the characteristics of people that tend to go into this kind of email marketing, email design piece, the graphic designer, sort of coder, uh, sort of a problem solver, they tend to not be the aggressive uh, people who want to manage and want to be out front and they're not super vocal and they're easy to get along with. So they kind of get overlooked. And his point was we need to stand up here 
and you need to say something, and you need to push back to your marketing communications people or push back to whomever your event people, whoever is constantly saying to you, hit the email send button, hit the email send button and actually say, no, we got to rethink this, we got to collaborate, and you people need to understand what goes into this, because this is our brand now, because it's more than email. So it was a very, very good session. So a couple of things I wanted to say on, uh, on just that, and talking about that project management point, I pulled out some of the tweets that I thought were really um, pushing this point, saying it better than, than I am. And that they're saying things like, we shouldn't be handing off projects. We should be working together all along the process. And they're saying the process is totally wrong in how teams are organized. So there's a misfit, misalignment. And they're seeing this in B2C, B2B, et cetera. All the markets are saying this. It was a collective uh, agreement among the attendees that, that the, right now, the way things are currently structured, we don't have the right teams in place. We have new jobs and new skills that are needed, and people aren't correctly staffed to have this. Maybe only agencies have this, but internally, the company themselves don't have this. And uh, they really spent a lot of time getting talking about workflow and collaboration. And if you see the tweet in the bottom right, I kept that in even though there's an expletive in there. Because I also wanted to just, again, give the association people on this call a heads up that this is reality and this is when you now have conferences and you're now starting to see as a trend also speakers who um, are getting real about the language they use and taking it a little bit more street. And also you're seeing that coming out in your attendees and what they're saying because they're talking now in, reality, in kind of real terms. And that's kind of another trend that I definitely see happening, both in events, in keynote speakers. So don't be surprised if you're dropping 10 grand and all of a sudden your keynote speaker comes in and drops the F-bomb because it's becoming very common. Top trend I've seen in the last two years for sure in keynote speakers. But point being, you got to be okay with that now, right? That, that if you can understand that and you can include that in, you have to understand that that's part of social media as well. And that shift is a cultural shift that is changing, again, the way we're able to communicate back to our members. And we're going to get to that kind of trend in just a sec. Also, not surprisingly, mobile was everywhere. I mean, within every session, there was some component of a mobile com aspect to it. So the one main speaker on mobile, his point was you got to be in the mobile world. Like, we're in the mobile world. You know, if you're the, you know, 8% of the population who doesn't have a, a phone <laughs> you know, of some sort, then okay, then probably we should leave you alone. That's okay. Maybe you're playing dues. We won't worry about it. But the rest of us are all in the mobile world, and therefore the communication life cycle has completely changed because actually if you're a communicator, it's a great news because you have more options to communicate to them. Like let's say you just used to use direct mail, and you only had six days to send stuff, and now you only have five. But now, you know, you have uh, mobile and you can do this seven days a week, you know, all the hours of the day that that particular human might be awake. So from a communicator, mobile should be seen as something that's amazing and we should all be jumping on this to understand how to really fully take advantage of this and leverage it. But we have to understand that it's also changed the rules of the game and that we as communicators, uh, our power has been lost to some extent in terms of controlling the message, because it's now, of course, the recipient who controls what they get and what they want from us. And we have to understand that relationship, and we have to honor that relationship, but it can be such a strong thing if we can get it right. So a couple trends that I pulled out are, are statistics. 138% increase in opens on mobile in 2013. That's according to Litmus. Uh, that's uh, something to uh, anytime you're passing 100% probably should pay attention to. And another really interesting one is that 71% of mobile purchasing decisions were made because they received an email. Now that's really interesting, right? So we're starting to see this trend and they're starting to put statistics behind it between email, mobile, social, right, and actually making purchases and understanding then the kind of the next thing they're studying is when do people actually make buying decisions. For example, very, I think it's like 2 to 3% of people actually are making um, mobile, they're actually purchasing on mobile, right? But they got the, inf the information for what they wanted to buy on their mobile, and then they went to the desktop and actually made the purchase decision. Now, if you're an association and, oh, I don't know, you might put on events or you sell memberships, probably something to think about. 
because that means that you have a split thing now. You're influencing them somewhere, maybe on their tablet, maybe on their iPhone, and then they're actually making the transaction on the desktop. A couple of t key points there. Have to understand user interface differences on both devices. Have to understand how to engage on both devices. And have to understand that when you're talking to them on mobile, it's different maybe than when they're coming to the actual desktop. So maybe they don't want to have all the same information. They don't want to be pitched on desktop. They just want to make the transaction because that's to them where they do transactions. You know, they're not comfortable with mobile banking. They want to do it on desktop. But understanding that fact 